from business owners, especially because business owners may have received their PPP funds, but were not yet open. And so they were faced with paying their employees who weren't even able to come to work. And so because of that, now um, you can spend these funds over 24 weeks instead of eight weeks. So business owners have more time to use those funds um, and are under less pressure. The other major change is that the rehire date for your employees is now extended from June 30th to December 31st, 2020, so giving you till the end of the year. So initially, um, business owners needed to prove that they had hired back all of their employees or equivalent employees by June 30th. And again, many business owners weren't yet open to be able to do that, or they couldn't secure the same workforce or replacement workforce. So now business owners have more time in order to meet the December 31st deadline. Um, and so what you will need to do in order to be eligible for forgiveness is either hire back the same employees, hire back um, similar employees, if you can't hire back the same employees. And if you, ha if you have an inability to do those things, um, you need to be able to prove that or let's say you had an inability to return to the same level of business activity um, prior to the business that you were doing, the level of business you were doing in February 15th of 2020. So basically um, there's a number of businesses who may have reduced hours. They may have like in a restaurant reduced seating capacity, things like that um, would need to be demonstrated in order to prove that you don't need or couldn't hire back the same amount of employees. Um, with the PPP loan, 100% of that is forgivable if you spend it based on what the requirements are. And you need to be able to ask, you have to ask for forgiveness, apply for that, and then be able to demonstrate how you've met all of those qualifications. The next thing is, is that for some people, they might not be able to spend it according to the guidelines. So we hope that everyone gets 100% of their um, loan covered, but there may be people who this won't be true for. And so um, now there have been changes to the way that the repayment works. So you must, um, you must repay whatever the portion is that was not spent according to the criteria. So let's say you received a million dollar loan and um, after applying for forgiveness, they determined that 100,000 of that was not eligible for forgiveness. The business owner is going to need to pay that back and they're gonna need to pay that back with 1% interest. Initially, they had two years to pay back that amount that's now been extended to five years. And then the first uh, payment is due six months after the SBA makes the determination about forgiveness. So once they say, okay, we've reviewed your forgiveness application and we've determined that 100,000 of that is not eligible for forgiveness. Once they make that determination six months after that, that's when you need to start making your first payment. Um, of course, if you have any questions, um, I am happy to chat with you about that, or I also recommend reaching out to your lender um, if you have additional questions or contacting the SBA. Um, the information that we're providing you here is the best information that we have, um, but sometimes we may misinterpret something or may not be entirely accurate, so it's always good for you to do your own research um, before you make any decisions about how you're spending your PPP loan. So that's it from me. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to council member Lentz, who will talk about uh, resources for uh, members in the community. All right, thank you, Madison. That was a great uh, you know, uh, explanation of a very complicated subject matter. And you did you. it very, very <laughs> nicely. And, and you know, I think uh, uh, you know, a lot of our uh, businesses that are, you know, that would be eligible. I think if they watch this, they'll feel confident that they could apply and uh, get through all the paperwork that I'm sure is uh, required. Um, yeah, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that COVID uh, has, has brought on is, is food insecurity uh, to not only our 
residents in Brisbane, but you know across the the county. And and thank goodness that the county has partnered with various agencies to get out the word in regards to um, being able to access food. And so uh, in our own area, and something we've talked a little bit about, um, you know, at previous town halls, <clears throat> yeah, Jefferson High School has a free uh, pickup uh, service on Thursdays and Saturdays at uh, 11 a.m. And uh, all you have to do is just be a San Mateo County resident. So um, you don't have to live in Daly City. You can just show up. Um, you know, typically it, it, you know, they have about 1,200 uh, meals or boxes uh, that they give uh, to, to folks in need. Uh, one box is produce and fruits, and the other is, you know, let's say a carton of milk and some canned goods. And, you know, it's a very well-balanced um, uh, food uh, delivery, you know, pickup. And then uh, at Bayshore School, on Friday mornings at 10 o'clock, uh, they do the same program. And one of the things that they do at, at Bayshore that's different from Jefferson is that if you don't have a car, you can, you can pick up the, the, the groceries. And granted, this might not be something that is, uh, you know, really, you know, something that, that someone from Brisbane would do, but it's, it's great for people that live in the Bayshore community. They can, you know, if they don't have a car, they can at least get, um, the, those boxes using, uh, well, some of them, you know, pick up the goods themselves and they carry these two large boxes to their homes. But most people, they'll bring a little cart and, and we'll put it on there. And, um, you know, if people want to volunteer at either Jefferson or Bayshore, they're always looking for people to, to lend a hand. So show up at Jefferson at 1030, uh, they'll put you to work. Show up at um, Bayshore at, at 930 and they'll put you to work. You know, one of the great programs that, um, uh, that we just found out today through the county uh, conference call is this thing called Great Plates. And what it, what it does is that it allows folks who, mostly seniors, uh, but it, it isn't just necessarily seniors. If, if you're between 60 and 64, and you know, you might be in, in that vulnerable COVID, um, uh, you know, you know, state where, you know, you could potentially, you know, uh, catch the virus, or if you, if you are infected, or if you've been exposed uh, by others who are infected, um, what they do is that they, they partner with local restaurants, and those local restaurants make the meals, and, and then they deliver them to your house, and um, the program was supposed to end today, but they extended it for another month, to uh, July 10th, um, and uh, over the last, I think they've been doing it for the last couple of months, uh, they've, they've served uh, almost 1,300 uh, residents in San Mateo County with those services. And in and, and Madison, you were talking about your, your grandparents, they, they've been participants of, of Great Place, correct? Yeah, so it's their new favorite thing. Um, they receive three meals a day, and they're really, really big portions actually. Um, and they are three square meals. So things like for breakfast might be scrambled eggs, hash browns, toast, a big thing of fruit. Um, they've been getting things like enchiladas, um, fish with vegetables and mashed potatoes. They've been getting um, pasta with meatballs. I mean, you name it, they've been getting it. Really hearty salads, um, really nice sandwiches, and they also get all kinds of goodies. So they'll sometimes get cookies and water and juice and applesauce and protein bars. I mean, they really have more food than they know what to do with. And they've formed such a great relationship with the restaurant and um, the owner is the one who actually delivers to them every single morning. And um, they told me about this business and this business is actually located in Oyster Point. And um, they're either within, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're within an office building. And so for this business, it feels so bad for them because they pretty much lost all their customers. They used to get customers from, you know, the people that worked in the area and they would do a lot of catering of 
meetings and lunches within those office buildings. And so now everyone's working from home and they don't have that customer base of people who are going to come and support them otherwise because all the people who come there are, are there because they're working and so um uh, the program like great plates is is completely saving their business and so um it's really great for my grandparents they love looking forward to seeing somebody every day who's just got such a good attitude mm -hmm. and they think that the meals are wonderful and um i highly recommend the program if you qualify and i think that's something that's actually paid for by fema i believe that california was piloting the program and it just helps everyone it helps everyone out it helps the seniors out it helps the businesses out and it's paid for by our government. So why not as well, right? Yeah, there you go. No, that's awesome. And and Caroline, have we um, put this in our uh, blast, the Great Plates program? I think she's muted, but I'm pretty sure that it has been okay. because that's how um, my grandparents found out about it. All right, good. And, and just in case, you know, people are watching or they're going to watch it later, uh, I have a phone number for you. So it's 800-675-8437. And just call up and they'll, uh, you know, you know, make sure that you qualify and, and you could be like Madison's grandparents and get some nice uh, hot meals delivered to your door. Um, and then, you know, there's a couple other things that I just wanted to, to talk about, uh, the testing. So, um, you know, anyone can get tested for COVID. And, um, you know, even though you might not have any symptoms and you might feel like, okay, yeah, this thing's, you know, we're, we're you know, COVID is kind of past and, you know, I don't have to worry about it. You know, it's really, really important to get tested because when people get tested, that information goes to the county health inspector and it really helps the county to understand you know, how are people, um, you know, dealing with COVID? Are, are we seeing an increase in cases or a decrease or a stabilization? And so um, they've recommended that if you're an essential worker, that you should get tested every uh, couple of weeks, right? Every other week. And if you're someone who's not, like myself, you know, just uh, uh, get tested once a month. All right, it's super easy. You, you just go to the county's website. It takes five minutes to fill out the information. And then um, they have testing uh, that's uh, mobile. So sometimes it's in Daly City, sometimes it's along the coast, but it's always set up at the Expo Center in San Mateo. And when I did it, it took five minutes. I went down there and five minutes later I was gone and it was super easy to do. And um, yeah, I hope, I hope more people from Brisbane get tested. And then, then the other thing was um, uh, some new county parks are open. So uh, Devil Slide and the Nipero Cerro Park in San Bruno, both those parks, now you can go into the parking lot and enjoy those trails. So, um, you know, Pacifica has been just absolutely gorgeous, you know, recently, and I highly recommend um, you know, getting out there and, and getting in some fresh air and some beautiful scenery. I think Sharon had a question for you. I do have a question. It's about testing. Is it possible to not only get a test for um, COVID actual infection, is it also possible to get the antibody test? So when you fill out the information, uh, there's also, uh, 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 they'll also ask you if you want to be part of a study, research study. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it and filled out the information. Um, you know, maybe, you know, I'm not uh, someone that they're looking for. So, um, but you know, I know that there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of tests out there for antibody testing. And, um, you know, I've, I've heard that, that some tests are not very accurate. And so, uh, but Stanford, Stanford is doing this research study and, and partnering with the county. And I think if you were, you really wanted to, to get the antibody test, I would contact uh, Stanford University and, and be a part of their program because 
they are doing a research uh, program with antibody testing. And okay. that's, that's really what's, what's needed, you know, so all that data can be collected. Cool. Thank you. I do know that it was mentioned in our, um, on our call in the past that the antibody tests are like the wild, wild west of tests. <laughs> so they're, they all vary. I think they're still trying to determine like how accurate the data really is. Um, but I would trust Stanford. Yeah, I there you go. Good one. Yeah, I'll well, definitely check it out. I've just had people ask me as well if that, yeah. if the Verily project included antibody testing. So. I don't believe that it does. Yeah, not okay. at this time. But, okay. you know, you can get connected to, you know, uh, yeah. more in depth. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Was that it for you, Cliff? That is. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on to Jane Chandler. Guys, let me turn on my light. Okay. Ah. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Um, my name is Jane Chandler, and I am the Senior Director of the Community Resource Center, which is actually located in South San Francisco, but we are the core service agency for three different cities, Brisbane, South City, and, and San Bruno. So we're your family neighborhood, San Mateo County funded uh, safety net service provider. Um, safety net services really, um, um, actually council member Lentz um, shared with you San Mateo County um, website uh, forward slash food. That is a wonderful resource. It has, um, it'll take you to all the different um, options for food. In fact, I'm going to share my screen with everybody because food security or fruit, food insecurity is one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so can everyone, I uh, hopefully, um, yeah, can you guys, there we go. okay, great. So um, here are the, here are the eight different, um, not that this is super important, the most important quadrant for us is, is, is we are your folks here in South City. We're at 1486 Huntington Ave, which is right next to um, the Salvation Ar Army building, uh, just a block away from that lovely Seas Candy on El Camino Real and Spruce. So anything safety net service providers, come visit us or call this number. Um, or you can also email, um, you can also email this, th it's a great to email because we can track the questions and make sure, you know, voicemail is great, but email really, there's a paper trail. So if you guys want to email, if you need, if you have any needs whatsoever, um, or your friend or your neighbor or somebody you see in the street that's homeless, we have a lot of uh, count, uh, community members call up and say, hey, can you help this guy I see on the streets? And that's been a great reason. Anyway, email CRC at ymcasf.org. And that's YMCA San Francisco SF.org. Uh, yeah, so back to this one. So our safety net services are just like council member um, said, uh, you, uh, you can go on to smcgov.org forward slash food. You can see all the programs. Um, in this orange, you can click on, see it's a hyperlink. You can also look at all of the food pantries and the requirements there. And then you can also find out how to apply for CalFresh. All right, so back to core service, uh, core services that we provide. So along with food safety, we also have a diaper program that's new this year, we created. Um, diapers are expensive. So if your income has been negatively affected you know, by COVID, please contact us at the email and say, hey, you know, we need some diapers for my infant. This is the size. Do you guys have the size? Because often we don't, sometimes we'll run out of sizes. So it's really important that you make the trek all the way over to South City to our agency to give us a, a jingle at our phone number or email us to ask if we have your diaper size. We also do um, homeless connection. 
So temporary shelters all the way up to victims of domestic violence, you know, for hotels or therapeutic service uh, linkages there. Um, uh, and we also do financial aid. So financial aid is probably our biggest program, y'all. Um, and it's really great for all of us to, to know this critical resource. Um, we have, we are um, part of San Mateo County financial aid. Uh, we've been distributing financial aid for folks that are in financial distress for many, many years. Um, and we can help with moving into a place. So your deposit, first and last month's rent. We can help um, if you're behind on PG&E, um, your Brisbane water bill. Um, we can even help you with car repairs if is a car is something that you need to get to work, right? So if you can establish some documentation that your car is critical to get to work, we can also help with car repairs. It does, all of these financial aid, of course, requires some paperwork, so I'm gonna apologize in advance. Um, hopefully we can help you at the end of the day, but it does require, this is government money, and the government likes you to, you know, fill out tons of paperwork, um, as we all know. Um, so yeah, if you need financial assistance for any way, even if, um, even mortgages, we've helped a couple people with mortgages recently that um, their entire household income was decimated by COVID. You know, one was, um, you know, a restaurant owner and the other one was an Uber worker, right, as a partners, and they couldn't make their mortgage. And we were able to establish financial need because they didn't have much in their savings having just bought the house and have nothing in the bank to uh, sustain them. So if you feel like you can establish some good financial need, please give us, um, uh, shoot us an email and we'll email you a packet and you're welcome um, to talk to us and we'll help you every step of the way. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about, just in case folks don't know, for those of you that are, um, that are part of the immigrant family household and if you weren't eligible for that stimulus check, that um, that we were um, finally we've in the last month we've had the disaster uh, disaster relief assistance for immigrants plan and that's rolled out. Catholic Charities is the only nonprofit that's actually processing all those applications. So I'm going to just apologize again in advance that their phones are ringing off the hook. But once you do reach them. Um, and you can, you can find this at catholiccharitiessf.org. Um, you can call and process an application with them, and each eligible adult in your family can receive uh, $500, up to $1,000 for help. So that might help as well. Um, yeah, so food, diapers, Homeless shelter, if that's, if you or anyone you know or any community members are in that position, um, victims of domestic violence, um, and we also have a free, we have a sliding scale clinic for mental health that I also run. Um, and any referrals, if anyone's having some trouble um, or just in these challenging times need any kind of assistance, do, uh, do email us and we're happy to set you up with with uh, mental health or behavioral health support. Thanks, y'all. Thank you so much for sharing all that information with us. And, um, you know, some of us here may not need that, but we might be able to pass that on to neighbors who can pass that on to other neighbors. And I didn't realize until we went through this pandemic and we're still in it, but as we started to enter in this state, really all the resources that are available at our fingertips and all the ones that are becoming available, um, even more so to, to address this growing need in the community for food and for housing assistance. Um, but it's really wonderful that you guys are here to stay. And um, it sounds like you really, you can meet so many different types of, of needs. Would you say that um, if somebody is unsure whether you can help them maybe i'm sure you know on your website it lists all the things that you can help with but if they haven't seen their exact need listed that they should still call you because there might be a way that you can help that they just don't know about yet 
Oh, absolutely. You know, cause for any reason, I have to say one of the things I have to like be very proudful about is we really care. I have a staff of four. There's only four of us and we're handling five times the amount of community members we usually help. Oh and we've goodness. already doled out probably close to 120 families, almost $200,000 in rental and uh, utilities assistance. And those are people that are, were about to be evicted. Wow. And with the moratorium, we've kept them housed. That's over a hundred families. So, you know, and probably the lowest tap-in resource community is Brisbane. And I think probably just because of our low population, right? Yeah. Most of our folks come from South City and um, San Bruno, but I'm happy to be here today because I also just feel like um, there are some pockets in, in Brisbane that, you know, folks really could use the assistance. And um, if you think that it should be for somebody else, you know, hey, give us a call because it might absolutely help you or your family or your neighbor. We've had at least four or five different neighbors call and help somebody through um, with a neighbor who had limited English or um, had trouble, you know, going through stodgy paperwork. And, you know, the, the shiny example of those amazing community members is just something to write about because um, they've uh, contributed to countless volunteer hours to try to help their neighbors stay housed and get the assistance they need in this really difficult time. We love that. Yeah, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's fantastic, Jane. Uh, Jane. You know, um, now you've been around, though, for a long time, your organization in South San Francisco. So is, is, this isn't just something that happened because of COVID, correct? Yeah, that's right. So we've been a mental health agency for about 25 years in the same area. Um, we're, we're actually, we're part of YMCA of San Francisco. So all of the gyms that you know in San Francisco, I'm part of that agency. They, we go all the way from San Mateo, um, the gym on between 92 and 101, that big gorgeous yeah. Casablanca-like gym, all the way up to Marin County. So we have 14 different gym branches, but a huge segment of our work is nonprofit work. Um, and I ha and and we've been the core service agency for about, I want to say six years now in South San Francisco. So we've been around for a while, but all of the, um, uh, you know, all of the necessary requirements or income levels for you know, qualifying for financial aid assistance have been lifted or totally decimated because of COVID-19. Um, so I think that's where we're going to reach a lot of folks that maybe you even own a house, but you're, you're, in a, um, you're in a tip economy and, you know, you're in big trouble. So yeah. I just, yeah. you know, maybe it's not the six of us on this call, but we certainly know somebody that fits that category. And if we can get the word out, at least by you know, word of mouth and neighbors helping neighbors, we can reach those folks uh, and make a real difference. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, Sharon, you know, you've been the heartbeat of VCRC. So, I mean, you, you've, you have fielded every call, you know, or, or been a part of every call that's come in. And, I, and I'm sure that uh, being in your position has, has, I mean, it's been it's been awesome what you've what you've done, but you, 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 it's also giving you a kind of a realization that you know not everyone in Brisbane is is in a good place, right? There there are, as Jane just mentioned, you know, there's some pockets of folks that 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 could use assistance that that are in need. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, being able to to um, you know, take the knowledge and experience that you have had with BCRC and being able to connect with Jane and then mm -hmm. connect those people to Jane. I mean, that's what it's about, right? It's trying to make, you know, it's about networking and, and yeah. making our, 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 our social um, interconnection stronger. Absolutely. I imagine that I'm going to have to get the link from you and I'll put it up on the BCRC website because I've put some really, I've, I've been, it's growing as we go on the, the website and the organization and our intentions. And um, as Alliance Club, we voted uh, just last week to, and, and also last night to continue on with this part of our club because the Lions have been a big part of BCRC. And so we have decided that at least as long as COVID is uh, an impact in our society, which could be for another couple of years, we're going to keep, not just the website going, but our impact that we can provide for the city. So, and there are, 
Um, I don't know if you're ready for me to talk about the website, but if not, I mean, I'm happy to have Jane finish too, so I didn't want to cut you off. Oh, I'm good, Sharon. That was, that was a wrap for me. And unless right. anybody has any questions, thanks so much. Well, this sounds like a good segue. Why don't you go ahead and maybe, Excellent. Sharon, you can tell us about some of the requests that you've fulfilled and what the experience has been like so far in, in meeting some of these needs in the Brisbane community. Absolutely. Um, is it okay if I put the website up for us to see? I think it should be. All right. I'm going to take me off and I'm going to put the website up. There. Can you see that? And Sharon, are we, as, are we changing the name to Brisbane Community Response Coalition or are we keeping it COVID Response Coalition? Well, we were going to keep it COVID until we get out of the COVID issue. I mean, it, we want, it. so I, I have no issue changing it as soon as we're ready to. Um, I kind of like the community response. I've just been calling um, it that because I was told that it, the name was changed. So I was oh, we didn't officially, getting it right. All right. Well, we haven't officially changed it, okay. but I will, um, I'll touch base with everybody and see if we should just okay. go for it. Um, this, so first of all, I want to say what Jane has said is, uh, interesting to me about how Brisbane, we haven't had a lot of people making requests. And I think my insights to this are, we've only had 37, which let's be realistic, 37 people reach out that needed help. And that's not very many, considering we have 90 volunteers to help. So <laughs> what's happened is all of the people that are helped are no repeat customers. So everybody that gets help links in with the person that helped them. And then that person kind of takes them on and continues to help them. So we had a person who needed a ride to a doctor. After that, she continued to call the volunteer and they've set up an agreement that she just checks in with him whenever she needs a ride. And um, we've had people that need help with unemployment insurance applications. And we've, I have a volunteer who has literally said, I want to do that. I know how to set it. I know the system. I've got it down. Anybody that needs help, send them to me. So we've got people that are on the list that I make masks. This one woman is like, all I do now is make masks. So if anybody needs masks, so anytime someone asks for a mask, we send them the, to her and she gets the masks and delivers it to them. Uh, we've had great response from the community, letting us know the different first responders in the community. And that's been awesome. As we've gotten the list to grow now, we're up to 16 and every 10 days, we send them out a gift certificate to one of the restaurants or the grocery store in town so that we can support the restaurants, but then we can also support our first line workers and our essential workers and let them know that we care about them. And we've had a lot of great response from that as well. We've actually had some front first response workers donate to the BCRC through the Lions Club for the food because they were so grateful for all the certificates we got. Um, we have a citizen named Steve. Oh, shoot. I'm having a moment. Steve, I've got to figure, I'll think of his name in a second. He has called me, I think it's Goodwin, so many times, Sharon, I have more money donated from people in Brisbane. I'm going to go buy more certificates. He's bought <laughs> over $2,000 worth of certificates from stores in Brisbane from money or restaurants and stores from money he's gotten donated from residents in Brisbane to do that. So, it, people are just, anybody that finds out about the website continues to input and give help and just, it's been an amazing process for me. I, I, um, my company's theme last year and is going to continue for another bit of time is rising strong. And this website has given me the opportunity to do that and to get past some of my fears of just the idea of the responsibility for helping someone. I mean, I, I slept the first few nights panicking that I'd miss somebody's request and that I wouldn't be able to help them. And it's, it's just a really amazing experience. And so for me, it's been a chance to break out of the things that I'm in my comfort zone from. And one of them was creating the website. And so I do want to show you some cool things about the website. Um, I changed it a bit so that it's easier to navigate. And if you look across the top, I'm sure you can see my mouse. I've got the give and get help forms 
all on one page now so that you can just go straight to that form if you need help or if you want to give help. We've got the Village Helping Hands in that page. We have been getting all these great um, community resource things. Caroline's been sending me and now we have the stuff that I'm going to be in port and putting with Jane. So in here we have transportation resources. And so you can easily click here to get the facts about that. You can go to the, um, ex the same place and you can get the membership application right from this site. So people don't have to go all over the place to find things. Um, community resources for food. Carolyn just sent me this. So I put it up on that page so people can see right away and they can click right here to go right to the website and it takes them in and they can access all that information. The uh, COVID-19 information I put there, you can actually go straight to the CDC website from this. You can go, um, the information about the Verily project is up here. And so you can click right on there to get to that. Um, shelter in place facts, I haven't updated this, but the shelter in place facts are linked to the county. So they're always updated. So I will update this just so people know they're updated. Um, here's a whole thing someone sent us, how to make the masks appropriately. So this is all up there for people that want to know how to make the masks. And then the, um, the business organization for San Mateo County has a lot of information similar to what Jane talked about with uh, resources for families, resources for businesses. So people can click right onto this and go right to that website and they can see all the different information that the county has available. Um, I also put a special page up for essential workers because I just want everybody to see that. And anytime you know of somebody, please put them on the list for us um, because we want to appreciate them. And a lot also, of people won't put themselves on the list. You have to do exactly, it. Exactly. And then um, also all the Brisbane food delivery and pickup options are in here. And I did update these lists so you can click on if they deliver, you can click on the delivery tab. Um, you can click on this tab and it takes you to either their website or wherever they're delivering from, although that's incorrect. I need to fix that. Uh, you can go right to, if they don't have a website, it takes you to the a page for Google that gives them all the information about their store or their restaurant. So everything's in here now. As I get more information, I'm just adding to it. I feel like it's a great resource now for Brisbane to find out. I mean, again, I'll put um, the information that I have uh, from Jane in here and it can be a nice place for people to go to just get access to any resource available to anybody who lives in Brisbane. And I just, again, want to thank you all for trusting me with this project because it's been a wonderful pleasure for me and a privilege and I love it. So I'm, Brisbane is an amazing town. We are so blessed and everybody that lives here is, everybody that I've ever met that lives here is so intent on making sure that our life is healthy and beautiful and loving and just, it's a great space. So this is my pleasure to be able to do something to help. Thanks. Great. Jane, did you have a question? Oh yeah. Um, thanks council member, member Davis. If I can jump in really quickly, Sharon, this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> this is fantastic. What a comprehensive list. And obviously your love and passion has poured into every detail in this. Thank you. Um, I forgot to mention you guys earlier when I was so eager. I don't like eyeballs on me, so I was super eager for the segue to Sharon. But um, I <laughs> forgot uh, um, to tell you guys that we have brown bag grocery days two times a month. Oh, and it's, cool. the, it's the Thursday following the second and fourth Tuesday. Please don't ask me why it's not the second and fourth Thursday. It, <laughs> if you think about it and your noodle bakes, you'll realize why. Um, because sometimes the first is on a Wednesday. Anyways, um, uh, yeah, it's an IQ test that I failed. Anyways, so my point is, tomorrow is actually uh, what, our first of the two June days. So we give okay. out two, 250 brown bags. You get wow. two huge boxes of groceries, staples, eggs, milk, um, a huge box of produce, right? So anybody you know that actually is in food need now, send them over tomorrow between 12 and 4. They might have to wait in line. So uh, if it's somebody who can't, you know, is elderly or, um, you know, somebody who's not in a good health position to wait in line for a long time, 
um, you know, make sure to send somebody along with them that's fry that can wait in line for them. Um, but it's an amazing amount of groceries. Uh, and you don't have to provide anything but your identification. Wow. Um, it's kind of income level on your honor, at least right now during COVID. So tomorrow is the next brown bag day and we'll sign them up. Uh, we're bilingual in Spanish, um, actually trilingual Spanish, Cantonese and English tomorrow. Wow. Um, and then on the 25th is the second one of this. And so two time, two Thursdays a month going forward for virtually time eternal, um, <laughs> you guys send folks over that need groceries now for no awesome. money whatsoever. Awesome. We will. I will definitely get that up. <laughs> Dan, thanks so much, you guys. I'm sorry I Thank failed you. to mention that earlier. Yeah. And, and Jane, Jane, do you need uh, volunteers to help? Oh, yes. If you guys have anybody in mind to volunteer, we would love it. We're actually like super overtaxed. Um, we don't often have, but I don't also don't like 20, I don't want 20 people to show up, right? So email me uh, personally or email the email that I showed you guys earlier, CRC at YMCA, because I, I want to, um, I want to be mindful of my staff who are super freaked out when like a like a, a very sweet and kind loving but enormous crowd shows up right because I'm trying to minimize their exposure to the general public um, so I'll be there tomorrow and I'm happy and also just call me I gave you guys my cell phone not to be blasted to everyone but call me if you want to coordinate that um, I'd love to receive your call yeah well you know Sharon if um, if you could put the word out to the volunteer group and then coordinate with Jane to come up with the right balance of folks that she could use, that would be great. Well, how about I give a blast to the volunteers and give them Jane's phone number or email. Okay. I'll give them your email yeah, and tell them the if they're mm -hmm. interested to email you and then you can get back to them. Yeah. Oh, awesome. you and that's brilliant. Perfect. All right. I can definitely do that. Okay, great. So at this time, we would talk about, we would have our Q&A, but we don't have any participants that I know of. Um, so we'll go ahead and skip that portion. Um, unless, is there anybody else who would like to say anything before we go ahead and wrap up? Uh, no? no. Thank you for doing these. Okay. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. And uh, if you haven't already, please sign up for the weekly vast at www.brisbaneca.org. We send out lots of really important information, just like what we've shared on tonight's town hall. And you'll also get other news about what's going on in Brisbane and updates about when we'll have the next town hall. And other than that, everyone stay safe. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. All right. Thank Good you night. for all of our participants. Thank, thank you for everything. Uh, thank you. Thank it. you. All right. Have a wonderful Yeah, thank you so much, Sharon, for all the amazing work you do. It's just well, I'm blown away. It's not just